I'd like to introduce you to the Nelson Marlborough Westland Regional winner. She is a school arts captain and recipient of Performing Arts Colours. She's played Sandy in Greece, Nancy in Oliver, and is currently playing Velma Kelly in the local production of Chicago. She's competed in two national secondary school cross-country finals, achieved academic excellence for the last two years, spent the summer in France on a French language exchange, and says the most important aspect of her life is family. From Nelson College for Girls, Stephanie Trengrove. The frigid water punched the air from his chest as he threw himself off the lighter. Scrambling to right himself, the muscles in his legs began to scream as he desperately, desperately urged them forward through the concrete thick water. His mind was blank with panic as bullets flew, adding to the uproar that clamoured and pulsed in his ears. Salt water, tinged with metallic blood, filled his mouth as he staggered to shore, wading through the broken, bleeding bodies. Finally on land, his feet slid and squelched in the water that filled his lead heavy boots. His sopping uniform slapped against his body, and still on he stumbled, head twisting from side to side, frenzied eyes searching for cover, anywhere to hide from the bullets that shrieked past, exploding into the shingle around him. He did make it to cover, up the beaches of Gallipoli that morning, and spent the following four months in hell. He endured merciless heat, biting cold, hunger that forced him to double over in agony, constant noise, constant killing, as he took the lives of the nameless, faceless enemy and had his mates killed in return. At the end of four months, he too was dead. His name was Private Garfield Jessup, and he was 17, the same age that I am. He too came from Nelson, a town situated at the very centre of Aotearoa, New Zealand. As a soldier, he was doing his duty. As a Kiwi, he was coming to the aid of another. Our nation, albeit small and remote, is fierce in its values. And it is for these values that Garfield Jessup and many others like him sacrificed their lives. They died thousands of miles away in a war that had barely touched their lives but they died aiding one who had called upon them in her hour of need for loyalty. When Britain declared war on the 4th of August 1914, New Zealand immediately offered her services. An ally, a friend, needed help, and it was in our nation's very nature to offer whatever assistance we could. Giving help to others is part of the Kiwi ideal a principle by which we live. And thus, it was inevitable that 103,000 of our people would bid farewells to their homes, their families, their lives, as they journeyed thousands of miles to fight in the aid of another. However, this commitment to helping those who need it runs deeper than just that. It coincides with the drive New Zealanders have to protect and fight for what is right. This commitment to doing what is right is not only apparent in the wars of yesterday, but continues with the efforts of our armed forces today. The air wormed its way into the vehicle to be breathed in and sit heavy with heat and dust 
in his lungs. His eyes were half closed against the fierce glare of the sun as he and his patrol moved along a deserted highway. With an explosion that picked him up and hurled him through the air, the world was whipped apart in one blazing moment. Fire roared as explosions continued to be detonated and into the burning black smoke. Gunfire was spat, cracks, adding to the booming of explosions and the yelling of men. In August of last year, Lieutenant Tim O'Donnell was killed when he and his patrol were attacked with rocket-propelled grenades, gunfire, and explosions in the Bamiyan province of Afghanistan. As a soldier, he was doing what was required of him. As a Kiwi, he was protecting what is right. His death was a tragedy. His family and friends left to mourn a man who was caring, brave, and selfless. And yet his father, when speaking of the death of his son, stated that it would be a waste of his life if New Zealand were to abandon its efforts in Afghanistan now. Despite the fact that this conflict, again one that is far from our shores, has taken his son's life, what is being fought for is that which is right. And that fight must continue. We, as a people, are driven to defend the cause of righteousness. And it is for that cause, for honour, that Lieutenant Tim O'Donnell sacrificed his life. On the 22nd of February, when images of terror and destruction were broadcast all over the world, that same cause was reignited once more. Not on the beaches of Gallipoli, not in the desert plains of Afghanistan, not in a foreign land distant and far away, but in Christchurch five weeks ago. The horror that was this earthquake left her crippled and helpless, in dire need of help. As the Defence Force, New Zealand's soldiers do their jobs and assist with the recovery effort. As Kiwis, they come to the aid of those who need it most and do what is right. All over the world, Kiwis are recognised for our various attributes, our friendliness and easygoing attitudes, the entrepreneurial nature that propels us into the future at the same rate as those nations larger and more powerful than we are, or the fierce competitive spirit that reels in countless sporting titles. But when Kiwis stand united, shoulder to shoulder, in the lilac dawn of Anzac Day. We remember different attributes of the people who inherit this proud nation. We remember loyalty and honour, two moral codes core to what this country believes in and for which our people, people like Private Garfield Jessup and Lieutenant Tim O'Donnell have fought and died for in the wars of yesterday and continue to defend today. Kia tu kaha tātou katoa, ngā iwi o Aotearoa.